much as we would prefer not. There's bad actors out there. There's countries out there that would do us harm. There's individuals out there who would do us harm. I mean, Islamic terrorism is just the, probably the most recent example of it, but there's been others certainly throughout our, our history, and that is exactly the, the role of government, is to keep us safe. And if other countries are, are threatening us, threatening our people, not, not with, you know, they, you know, I know the president would say that somehow China is threatening us by selling us low-cost steel. I'm talking <laughs> about like threatening with bombs, threatening with, mm -hmm. with weapons. I mean, that's exactly the role of government, is to keep us safe. And in fact, you know, uh, capitalist countries historically have always been the least uh, combative, have been the, the most free and the most peaceful, um, because there's no reason to go for a capitalist country to go uh, to war with another country. It's always because the, you're trading with them. You're trading probably. with them. You're benefiting from them. Exactly. You're benefiting. You're trading. You're benefiting from them. So I mean, uh, Alan writes, I think, in great detail. I can't do it justice, but in great detail about you know how a proper foreign American policy, and it's it's very needed, is to keep Americans safe from foreign invaders, from those who would do us harm, and and they're out there. Um, so that's what you would believe to be the 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 really the only role of government is essentially to to keep us safe and to protect our own rights, which in your, your mind is just uh, not, not violating someone else's ability to live their own yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, a, a, a government's role is to protect each of us as individuals, to live our own life as we see fit, not to not uh, exploiting others, taking advantage of others, always trading with others, but to protect us from force, from fraud. You know, whether it's you know a, a foreign invader who would come and enslave us, or from the pickpocket who would rip us off. I mean, they're violating our, our rights as well. So when people say, well, you know, from limited governments and individual rights, it's not that you're for, oh, you can just do whatever you want. Of course, you know, government is very important, but its role is very specific. And that's really part of America's genius is understanding exactly what we need government before. Because up until that point, it was basically the whim, you know, whatever the Pope thinks is good, whatever the king thinks is good, uh, whatever the leading intellectuals of the day think are good. You know, America isn't about the public. It's yeah. about each individual. And that's government's very important, but very specific role. Keep us free and keep us safe. I, I've heard somebody say this too, and you kind of echoed this earlier on um, when we were talking about elections. Uh, I, I heard this in 2016 during the presidential election. Obviously, the country was just, ever, it was so energized over it. Um, and I heard some people say, you know, the fact that it's such a big deal to people on who gets, who gets elected into office is really telling at how much control the government yes. has yes. because it in theory it shouldn't it shouldn't matter who's in office exactly. if if the government you know if you say like let's say the government was only about protecting us and our rights exactly. it really shouldn't matter that much yeah. who gets in office I, I i agree with that i mean that you know if if, if there was a proper understanding of a government's role, a real true American understanding of government, uh, you would know that its role is really limited and there's really not too much it can do. But we're in this environment now and there's, of anything goes. You know, and if, if the president, if Congress gets a great idea, a big idea of you know, how they want to spend your money, force you, um, then, you know, anything goes. So yes, I think in a, in a proper American society, you know, there wouldn't be this threat that, someone could come to power. I mean, that's part of the beauty. There's a lot written in the book about the, 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 the beauty of the system of checks and balances is that, you know, we're, we're not a, a country that's governed by men. You know, this is that we're co governed by laws, not by men. And um, so there's, you know, this is not in its, in its purpose, in its founding, a country where someone can come to power and, and be a dictator. Those boundaries, I think, are pushed more and more and more. Um, but it is, it's a, it, it starts philosophically. I mean, what are your choices now these days? It's either I am my brother's keeper, collectivism, or country first, also collectivism. You know, we, mm -hmm. we'll know when we have won when we have politicians who say, you know, I'm campaigning for every individual's right to live his or her own life and to pursue his happiness and reach his American dream. That, that would be, you know, we're a few decades away, but. Yeah, do you think we need a new political party? Um, I, I think no. I mean, do we do we need a new political party? I mean, people they say people say that they'll also say like, what we need is term limits. You hear that often too. We need term limits. I think that's actually irrelevant. I mean, unfortunately, politics is one of the places that there is a lot of regulation. It's very difficult to run for gov government. Uh, certainly, president thanks to a lot of the regulations on, for example, campaign finance mm -hmm. reform. You know, if you want to donate to someone, you have to fill out a. Forms. I mean, it's so even even the uh, government or um, 
elections themselves are highly regulated. I don't think it's necessarily that we need a new party. We need new ideas. Individualism is a very radical idea, tremendously radical. It's why it's, it's almost absence from the American politic today. You don't hear anyone talking about it. But when you, when you sit people down and ask them, you know, what do you think about a country? It, oftentimes it will come out. So I do think that there's an audience out there. I think that there's, there's excitement about individualism. People are kind of given permission to accept it once again. You know, yeah. to say, you know, yeah, I, I'm not my brother's keeper and you're not my keeper. Keeper, and we're all free, and we're all gonna make the best life we can, and that's that's real American spirit. What do you think of the Libertarian Party? Uh, you know, I, they're insignificant and uh, unprincipled, and oh, really? You think so? A joke and uh, irrelevant. I mean, if the Liber Libertarian Party was ever going to have an impact, they couldn't have had it in 2016. You know, when everyone hated both candidates, mm -hmm. presidential candidates, and you know, the, the Libertarian. Party, I think it's it's you know it's it's because it starts not with the party. It starts with the ideas. It starts with kids now who are 17, 18, 19 years old who are just learning about these ideas. Who, God willing, in four or five or six years, then can get together and inspire a movement that can ultimately inspire a party and candidates to represent these ideas. But there's almost like no shortcut. You know, you can't get to the electors. You can't get to the legislators you want until people have the ideas i.e. individualism, that they really need to have. What do you think about the Electoral College system? Uh, you know, I don't have an explicit view, view on it. I think it makes sense in its design, but I am not uh, kind of well-versed enough in it to really mm -hmm. speak specifically about it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, the founders were tremendous geniuses. I mean, huge geniuses. You just can't get around it. And it's why, you know, even now, people are swimming to get here, caravanning to get here, flying to get here, dying to get here, and we should welcome them. We should welcome here. You know, this country is basically empty. I think everything west of what the Mississippi is half owned by the government anyway. So really, yeah, this country is tremendous, uninhabited, vast, wide swaths of country. Oh, so that, people here in LA need to go. Yeah, <laughs> sure, they need to go there. out there. Yeah. Oh, well, you get it. I and mean, we we're talking about it a bit before. It's it's uh, well, yeah, I mean, you, you get a great value oftentimes in living in urban environments. It's one of the great things about... Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, oh, and, and, and just about this country is the influx of foreigners and new talents and new skills and, and new cuisines and new opportunities and ideas. So I mean, this, um, you know, and, and very quickly those become American, you know, whether it's, you know, it's, it's a great example of America truly is at its best the melting pot. Gotcha. Wow. Well, Jonathan, is there anything else that, that you, you want to get out there that you want to talk about that we didn't touch on? No, I think we've, um, you know, you've, 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 you've terrific, terrific interviewer. I mean, I, <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll say if I could, I mean, um, when I was in college, everyone who kind of wanted to virtue signal that they were into ideas had Communist Manifesto. So this was the this was the book that kind of people said, oh, see, I, and I think many of them read it because young people are interested in ideas. They mm -hmm. are curious about it. And in this is exactly what, you know, what a new textbook of Americanism is about. It's a, it's a short, really accessible primer for people to start, who are interested in ideas, learning about America, learning about some of these ideas, to start to question and ask some of these basic fundam fundamental principles. So for people in their 20s and 30s, high school kids, this is a great first step into introducing something that's gonna be very radical for them, but truly very American. Yeah, and like I mentioned at the early uh, at the start, um, it's question answer format. Yes, is kind of a really um, simple breakdown. Really, it seems like. Yeah, I mean the thing the thing with Ayn Rand at all is that you say I'm really an Ayn Rand, and then you show people Atlas Shrugged, which is I don't know 1,200 pages, and some people find that a little bit of a turnoff. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I can understand that. Um, so this is a tremendous introduction. I think to Ayn Rand, but also it's just simply to individualism, which is a, a radical concept that's so fresh for young minds and, and one that will really inspire a lot of people. Great. Well, I think that's a, a perfect place to end. Thank you so much, Jonathan, Thanks, for, for, for coming on. That was really great. My pleasure. Thank great. you. Cool. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.